Bring in Liz Young of SoFi, who's sitting here with us as well and has been listening to the conversation. Welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. Um, you know from listening to John and, you know, his appearances here that he's more bullish than most. Yep. And he doesn't really sound like he's backing off that much either. No. Is he too bullish? I respect it. Uh, definitely more bullish than I am. I don't know. I, I won't say that you're too bullish, but I do think that. Well, you can that... say that. I mean, if you think he's yeah, too bullish, say, that. say it. I'll, I'll respectfully disagree. I think that we're at a point now where there's this sort of crescendo of negative news that's about to hit. So we've got earnings obviously kicking off this week. This earnings season would be the one that confirms an earnings recession if things come in as expected. I'd point out, which I'm sure many other people have pointed out, that we haven't seen revisions downward since the banking crisis happened in March. I think there are revisions downward coming. So even the expectations that we have right now for a negative 6% growth quarter probably gets worse. And the second quarter is also expected to be negative. So I say that because that's sort of part two of a three-part series of an economic contraction. The first part is that you have bear markets, which we all know that we had in 2022, I do think that the equity market is going to pull back again if and when we confirm an earnings recession. And then part three is that you confirm an economic contraction. And I think that is also coming. I think this commercial real estate stuff and the contraction in credit is not to be ignored. And it's just the beginning of further headlines that we're going to continue to get. What, what's your rebuttal to that? That sounds like reasonable. It, it, it is the reasonable. Bull, it sounds to me like the, the bulls are the ones who have to go out on a limb. The well, bears don't necessarily have to do that or people who are more cautious because the story is right in front of them. And it seems to read rather well. You get paid to take risk. You got paid to take risk in October. And I think you're getting paid to take risk yeah, in certain if, industries yeah, and sectors. If you sectors. took risks before October, right, you got, you got crushed. There was no reward last year early if you took risks. Well, no, I mean, I mean, there's always a time to take risks. Why is now the time? Because I think that if you look at specific industries, so what I would pivot and say is if you look at certain industries, certain sectors, I do believe the valuations are retracted. Financials, you're looking at the steepest valuations, not just on a PE basis, but on a price to book and a yield basis going back to March of 20. So if we could all, you know, get in a time machine, go back to March of 20, would you want to buy stocks? Well, we, Hold, I mean, and, and, let's, let's we're in a whole, wholly different But financials are back to that level. 20. So would you want to buy financials in March of 20? Well, maybe they're cheaper for a reason today than they were then. Right? Well, they were cheap for a reason then, and they're cheaper. Maybe for it's a, a bigger reason now. It, 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 it may be, but I would argue that when the valuation dislocations are there, and you need to go through, you can't own just any of them. I think that some of them have weaker balance sheets, et cetera. But I don't think you want to write the group, group off. For example, Scott, financials are the best performing sector coming out of downturns handedly. You do not get a rally without financials participating. That may be fair and fine, but are they the best performing going into a downturn? We're still having a debate as to whether we're going in, not coming out. Well, I think that we have gone through, you know, we had two negative GDP quarters last year, and I think that's part of the riddle because that was not called a recession, but that did create a big dislocation. So we already had two negative quarters. It was not called a recession, but that did create a lot of dislocation in the market, semis, banks, et cetera. So I would argue that. So we already had the recession? No. Well, I think that you had market participants expecting the recession. And I think that, that created the dislocation. We have not had the recession. And the recession we're getting much closer to. I think there's a much higher probability we do step into a recession. If tomorrow comes out and they say there's a recession, are you going to sell stocks?